Hello folks, welcome back to our second part of the Swim Move course. In this lesson, we'll introduce Swim Move object and how to play with them. So this is our agenda. We'll first talk about assets ownership, then we'll define what is the Swim object and the ownership of objects. Then we'll teach you how to program with objects. And finally, the on-chain interactions. All right. Let's start with introduction to the three move objects. So before we talk about objects and three, let's discuss asset ownership first. Nowadays, most of the assets are owned by a centralized entity. For example, the money in your bank account is owned by the bank. The photos you post on Instagram are owned by Google. The videos you upload to YouTube are owned by YouTube. And the list goes on. The essence of Web3 is to change this. We want to change the ownership of assets from the centralized entity to the users. So the consumers own their assets thanks to the blockchain. Smart contract will replace the functionality of the centralized entities. And this is how we call a paradigm shift. So while on traditional layer one blockchains like, like Ethereum, assets are stored in address inside smart contracts. In other words, there's assets that now live independently, but only live inside maps. So from the account to the balance. If Bob wants to transfer some tokens to Alex, he needs to call the smart contract to update the map. Therefore, essentially, they don't own their assets. Transaction processing on other layer ones requires every transaction to be handled sequentially, as there is no upfront way to confirm that assets are independent of one another. The validators must update the whole state of the chain of every block and therefore must check that the action taken in one transaction does not conflict with any other. This process can cause bottlenecks, increasing latency and decreasing throughput of the chain. Well, on Sui, objects are the basic unit of data storage. Developers define, create, and manage those programmable objects that represent user-level assets. An object has distinct attributes, including ownership, whose values can be updated based on the governing logic of the smart contract that created. However, even though smart contracts create objects, they don't store the objects. Objects and their attributes are stored directly on chain in the user's account and can be directly accessed through uh, and controlled by the owner. So we use struct to build the three objects. For each three object, you must have the following two attributes, key and UID. And when viewed on Explorer, it has five attributes visible. Owner, object ID, type, version, last transaction digest block. Builders can customize these uh, objects by including other fields. So the ability to add, remove, and augment the information in fields over time allow digital assets on Sui to be dynamic, rather than static as they are on other blockchains. Information about the asset can accumulate over time, adding value, context, and utility. And here is a code example of structs and objects. So you can observe that the only difference between the struct color and the struct color object is a key and UID. But notice that key is an ability, while UID is a type. As for the ownership of Sway objects, there exist four distinct categories of ownership. Share, immutable, owned by address, and owned by another object. So the first two are accessible for anyone, whereas the last two are owned. Besides that, only immutable objects cannot be changed or modified. Okay, so here is an example of the programming with shared object. As we have mentioned, shared object can be modified by anyone, and you will go through the consensus. And in the code below, we can see that we use a transfer share object API to create the object and make it to the shared ones.
As for the immutable objects, as the name suggests, the immutable object cannot be changed. And similar to the shared object, the immutable object do not have an exclusive owner. Everyone can use a immutable object. And note that all move packages are immutable objects. And as you can see here, we use a transfer phrase object to create a new immutable object. So basically, we create an object and immediately freeze it. And now anyone wants to use it can pass the read-only reference. Notice that the phrase object function is a one-way function, meaning that an immutable object cannot be reversed. And besides that, you can also create the object first, then phrase it by calling this phrase object API function. And here is an example of the owned objects. So those objects are either owned by an address or by another object. As you can see the example here, here is an object owned by an address. So we'll use a transfer transfer function to create an object and then transfer to the message sender, which is also the, uh, the function uh, sender. And finally, is the object that owned by other objects. So in this piece of code, we create a new object owned by object, which has a parent object and is our object owned by address. So firstly, we create this object owned by object, and then we append it to the parent object by using the dynamic fields API. So dynamic fields, as an API that Sweet provides with arbitrary names added and removed on the fly. But note that the sender address will own the parent object, and the parent object owns the child object, and can refer to it by the name bchild. All right, so I have introduced four different kinds of objects and their ownership. And this is a, a full list of codes that contains these different kinds of objects. We'll use this code to uh, build and also publish on chain and see if we can create the objects we want. Okay, by now we assume you have already installed the Sway client command line tool, already have some test tokens. If not, please refer to our earlier sessions to satisfy the prerequisites. You can find our PowerPoints and also the codes in the GitHub rep repository. So firstly, I'm already in the in the path I want. So I will do say move build to build the modules and also to uh, testify if there is any problem. Okay, so it's uh, updating the Git dependency and yep, successfully. So now let's use sway client publish and with a gas budget. Uh, yeah, just a random number. So let's see. Okay, updating the dependency here. Rebuilding it. All right, cool. So that just means we have successfully uh, pushed our, our chains on, on, on chain. All right. And um, I have already explained which uh, those different kind of sections so let's just directly uh, call some functions here. Let's use sway client call gas budget with the uh, same number here. And also the package. So the package is just a published package here. All right, so that's a package address. And then also the module. So my module is called car. And also the function. So let's choose create object on by address. Let's try to create an object on by my address. All right. Try with that. Okay, cool. So this means we 
successfully created an uh, object and let's see okay right here right so the object changes shows that we successfully create an object owned by address in our module car and this is our package address and if now we use um, three clients object with uh, uh, the object ID which is is right here and then we'll see the detailed information of this object. So this is a move object, and the type is the address owner, uh, exactly as we want, right? So let's try another function this time. So let's try to create a immutable function this time. So create immutable function. Wait, immutable object. So it should be just fine to create another immutable object. All right, nice. So we created another object immutable. And let's get the information by typing sweet client object with the object ID here. All right, so this is a move object under the car, also the package, and the owner type is mutable. Perfect. All right, so seems like we have already created two objects. One is uh, object owned by the address, another is object, uh, immutable object. And now let's try to uh query the information from the explorer so i'll copy the object id here and then yeah let's go to the sweet explorer so here is a sweet explorer and remember to choose the devnet all right let's check Okay, so as you can see here, we have five fields, object ID, type, version, plus transaction block digest, also the owner. So the owner is mutable, and that's exactly what we want. All right, so that's how you uh, create the object and also query it from the command line tool and also the, the explorer. Nice. So... We'll give you an three move exercise to consolidate our knowledge. This exercise will involve structure definition, ability usage, function implementation, and return values. In the previous slides, we went over how to create different types of objects. Now we'll build a shop that sells cars by applying the knowledge we just learned. So you try to complete the car shop module and the core of the, this module has an admin role that can create shop, car, and autopilot objects. And the autopilot can be stored inside the car. You also define an initiate function which gives the admin role to the deployer and several create functions that can create each object. And you can refer to the code right here. So this is a template code for you to uh, fill in. So this is the module car shop and the, the imports to import the Swift framework. The shop admin cap is the structure, the Tesla autopilot, the Jarvis, also the shop. So this is an initial function and you should be able to give the admin cap to the, um, to the deployer. And those are the create functions which has the access control by using the shop admin cap. So you should start with those codes and fill in the blanks as you see fit. And the comments will help you understand the logic of the smart contract. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. And I hope you enjoy with three objects. I see you next time.